You're listening to the What Is It Show. Life, Life reality, reality, and redemption. And redemption. Here's your host, Shane Haleko. This podcast is meant for mature audiences only. Listener discretion is advised. The story you are about to listen to is a true story, based on events over the last few years. This podcast is being narrated by Frank Perez. Episode 2 My son, Sean, spent 72 days at Fuller Hospital. Our health insurance would not pay for his placement at Bradley Hospital, and Bradley Hospital would just not take Sean back. We were given a choice of Fuller Hospital or some place three hours away in New Hampshire. Our hands were forced to choose Fuller Hospital. This was not an appropriate placement, and the professionals knew that. Sean spent 58 days longer than the average stay. 58 days longer than the average stay. Fuller Hospital is geared towards adolescents with drug and behavioral issues, so their average length of stay is just 14 days. During his stay at Fuller Hospital, Sean was not receiving his sensory diet, his IEP education, or even his human right to visit home and see his family. Due to the severity of his behaviors, Sean was constantly receiving medical shots. These shots would either knock him out or keep him doped up enough for staff to be able to manage his behaviors. Sean was eventually discharged and placed at the Grodin Center Wright Program. The Wright Program, which stands for Residential Intensive Treatment Evaluation, had a low number of adolescents, a high staff ratio, and was, at least according to the Grodin Center, a very structured program with its own timeout room. It was a program where adolescents with extreme behaviors went right before they were placed in one of the Grodin Center's group homes in order to make sure that the staff at the group home could handle the types of behaviors that the right program observed. They were willing to create a program for Sean that the group home would follow if the Grodin Center agreed that one of their group homes could handle Sean's type of behaviors. Sean ended up spending less than a month with the right program, demonstrating in that short time period multiple aggressive behaviors. Now, this is what blows my mind. October 3rd, 2016, the Grodin Center decides that my son is ready and the Grodin Center group home is able to handle him in a less structured environment than the right program. However, on this day, Sean needed to be restrained by four staff workers for unsafe behaviors, yet they still decide to discharge him. Now, keep in mind that during his stay at the right program, his behavior chart documented seven verbal threats to harm himself, 69 self-injurious behaviors, and 67 aggressive behaviors. So, sure, why don't we just discharge him, right? Who would make such a decision? the Grodin Center's right program. That is who. On October 14, 2016, my wife and I received an email from the Grodin Center's nurse regarding her safety concerns for Sean, his peers, and staff. The email read like this. The floor staff do not have the proper training to deal with such a situation. As you all know, I am extremely concerned with Sean being at the residence with the six other children. The individuals who were present during the van transport on Friday, October 7, 2016, have to be taken into consideration as well. Their well-being, and the right to feel safe in their homes need to be considered. I do not believe a one-on-one -on -one is sufficient for someone making such threats, especially someone with his cardiac history, size, and intelligence. I understand that he has made self-injury and homicidal threats in the past and has never actually followed through on them, so people seem to be comfortable with this but all it takes is one time and one action to turn the empty threat into something viable and, subsequently, pose an extremely dangerous risk to himself, the staff, and the other residents. Any commotion in the house can present the perfect opportunity for accidents to happen, and we need to be aware of the worst case scenario and how to respond. I hope during this meeting we can collectively develop a plan, but without such a plan in place, I do not think it would be appropriate to proceed and continue residential placement at the Grodin Center. 
Isn't that what the right program was supposed to do? What is their plan that they were supposed to provide? As you listen along, you will figure out that the Groden Center would not be able to keep either Sean, his peers, or the staff safe due to his explosive behaviors. The Groden Center's nurse was correct, and they should have taken her advice before things would continue to spiral out of control, which they did. It is my belief that just like with the Cardinal Cushion Center on our previous episode, the main motive behind each one of these agencies was money. To keep a child in a residential program like one of these can cost as much as six figures. I would truly hate to find out that I am right about their motives. And that is what it is. The details and accuracy of these events are to the best of our knowledge. Any discrepancy in terms of time and or dates are not intended to mislead the listener. These stories are true and officially documented. Stay tuned to Episode 3 of these podcast series.